Welcome to more anime. I'm your fan of more anime, and today we will be reviewing, we will be discussing the One Piece TV special, Heart Gold. Yeah! So this little TV special, I shouldn't even call it little, this bad boy is almost two hours long, is a movie that, er, not a movie, it's a TV special, even though it's the length of an anime movie, that leads into a major motion picture One Piece film gold, which I just watched both of these bad boys back to back. I wanted to see, before I reviewed One Piece Heart Gold, I wanted to make sure how important it was to even watch this this special before you watch One Piece film gold because I just wasn't sure. The consensus online was that you really don't need to watch One Piece heart gold to understand what's happening in One Piece film gold and honestly I would agree. Um, I recently watched One Piece adventure on Nebulandia the uh, the TV special that involved the Foxy Pirates, and it blew me away with how well it was executed. But this One Piece Heart Gold, while it was entertaining, it did not feel necessary. Like, it didn't seem like a rant. I feel like you have to be a major One Piece fan to want to watch One Piece Heart Gold more than one time. To be honest with you, I don't think I'd truly go out of my way to re-watch One Piece Heart Gold uh, unless I really had nothing better to do. I love One Piece. One Piece has become my favorite anime slash manga of all time, which is a big deal. Like, I just started this series uh, a year and a half ago, and I feel that I absolutely adore this product, this franchise, and I just don't feel like One Piece Heart Gold lives up to the One Piece hype and I feel like Heart Gold would be a terrible place for a new fan to get introduced to the series. Uh, I mean, they might have a good time, but it, it just, it, it really, it hit all the points. It was no worse than any random Dragon Ball uh, movie, I guess. Uh, it was very basic. It kicks off with, you, you meet this girl, this, this little girl, who's eating food. She's, she's eating candy. She's being fed a bunch of candy. But she wants meat for some reason. They kind of make us feel like she's a, a female version of Luffy. I, and I don't understand why. They're like, I want real meat. She makes it a thing where you're like, okay, well, is she related to Luffy? I, I, I mean, I didn't think that, but it just seemed like they were trying to connect the, her liking meat like Luffy does for some reason. Um, this girl has information on where the pure gold is. There's this, this thing called the pure gold that exists that her father created that is basically the most rarest metal on the planet of Earth. This thing, or the, I got, I'm not sure if the One Piece world is even Earth. So on the One Piece planet, if you can get the pure gold, you can literally buy anything is what they said and I find that a little over exaggerated because I I don't um, I can't imagine that you could trade this pure gold literally for anything well maybe once you find out exactly what this bad boy does turns out this pure gold keeps you from aging so if you have a small teeny little piece of this pure gold, you will live basically forever. You will never age, 
and you, unless you're killed by a monster or a bad guy, you will never die. So that was a thing in this movie. She, it turns out this lady, this major, this major, not major, this, this special character, I cannot remember, remember her name. I'm sorry. She, uh, lived, she's 200 years old or 210 years old or some shiz. And she, uh, was living inside of a fish, like an a angler fish, for 200 years. It's a pretty wild concept, to be honest. Um, it actually took a minute before we actually got to see the Straw Hat crew, which eventually meet up with this little girl who escapes from the Navy. That ex She escapes from the Navy, who also has a CP0 member who I'm just now being introduced to, this CP0. I, I don't understand them oh so much yet. But uh, she escapes, and then we get to see a character that's from One Piece film, Gold, who has hired a guy named Mad Treasure, a fella who likes to hunt for treasure. He doesn't really care for treasure oh so much, but he likes the thrill of the hunt. And so he's also after this little girl. And so he follows her, and eventually she ends up with the Straw Hat crew. She tries to trick them. She even tries to take Luffy hostage, which was pretty funny, because he just did not care. I think he was, like, picking his nose or something. Like, he just did not give a shit about uh, being taken <laughs> hostage, and his crew didn't care. Basically, she threatened them and said, I want all your food, and eventually Sanji, this was actually a really cool character moment for Sanji. Sanji went and made her a bowl of shrimp fried rice, and she obviously devoured it, and it was the best food she ever had, um, which is awesome, because Sanji's a badass cook, and he is a damn good chef in the kitchen. And I like that. I like when Sanji gets time to actually show off his cooking skills. Mad Treasure shows up pretty soon after she uh, joins with the Straw Hat crew. She reveals that she has a ring on that is, has a small fragment of the pure gold, which they're all looking for. The Straw Hats also want to go with her to find this pure gold because it's worth... Uh, you could basically buy an entire country with this pure gold. From the way the movie, the, the special made it seem, is that with this pure gold, you could buy the world. That's how how uh, special it is. Maybe because of its properties of being able to keep you from aging? I don't know. Uh, at some point, Nico Robin says something like, if the pure gold has a curse, and if you you make contact with it, bad things will happen. And that really didn't, um, re didn't really matter. That whole thing didn't really matter. Um, eventually, a, she drops this ring that has this small fragment of pure gold, which could lead them to the real pure gold. And a giant anglerfish, a huge anglerfish, comes out of the water almost the minute she drops this ring. It's been following this ring for some damn reason. And somehow it can tell where this gold is. It swallows the ring. The Straw Hat crew decides to follow it because she explains that the rest of the pure gold is within this anglerfish. They, the crew proceeds to go within this fish, which I found cool that the whole setting of this, this special was within this fish. And this fish had three stomachs with three different islands in each stomach. Which is a little out there, I know, and I know we've seen some crazy shiz in the One Piece world, like uh, Sky Islands and Fishmen, but the fact that this fish has three islands in it, and one of them is this little girl's island, 
that's been in his stomach for over 200 years and it has not been processed. I find it crazy. He's, his digestive, digestive system must be insanely bad. I don't know. Like the fact that he can't process, he's got these three islands within his digestive system and they stay there. Basically, this girl grew up for 200 years by herself living within this anglerfish and only recently escaped, which is just absolutely, absolutely wild. She eventually explains the, to the crew that her father was a scientist. She cre he created the gold. And it almost makes you seem like he's a psycho. Like, I almost thought, oh, maybe the, the father will turn out to be the villain in One Piece Film Gold. I was wrong. I admit that. Uh, the crew ends up in there. They get chased by Mad Treasure. That's right. The main villain is named Mad Treasure. He has two sidekick, or not sidekicks, two, uh, I don't know, assistant captains, two people that will fight Sanji and Zoro by the end of the special. Uh, one of them has the ability to camouflage. He's got like the camouflage fruit. He can camouflage things. He's basically got the invisible fruit. It, it's just a different name. And then the other... The, he's got a lady on his crew who's always drinking, and she's got a, a bow and arrow. She's an archer, and I actually really liked her design. I really liked her personality. I just don't think she was used properly in this movie. I think out of all three of the main villains, Mad Treasure, the, the camouflage guy, and the archer lady, I feel like the archer lady was the most interesting but she wasn't involved a lot in this, this special. And so eventually the crew gets split up. And for some reason, Mad Treasure captures Nami, Robin, Usopp, Chopper, and I believe Brooke all at the same time after Sanji, Zoro, Frankie, and Luffy get split up from the crew. And none of them, for some reason, were able to fight back. He ends up making Nami and Robin wear like a total fan servicey outfit, which was just, which is fine. It just seemed really shoehorned in just to have a fan servicey outfit. Uh, I'll try and find a picture of it to put it in this video so you can see. Like they were not wearing this outfit. It was almost like a Egyptian. I don't, not sure, type of outfit. And it was just shoehorned into this movie just to have a little bit of fan service. And it kind of frustrated me that they didn't let Robin be a strong character or even Nami be a strong character in this. Mad Treasure never seemed like a tough opponent to me. Like, it, truly, I feel like if Frankie, Zoro, uh, Luffy or Sanji fought Mad Treasure, they would all beat him in a one-on-one -on -one fight. That's how strong this guy comes off to me. Uh, this guy, you know, he enjoys the hunt. He uses the crew that they, that the pieces that he captured, um, to, to his advantage. And he also, by the way, the Mad Treasure has the chain chain fruit ability. So basically he's got Kuropika from Hunter x Hunter's chain, uh, ability where he can control this chain that he's got. I think he can create the chain. It must be a paramecia. He can't become chains, but he has some way to manipulate chains. And I think he can create them out of thin air, but I could be completely wrong, but it seems like he had an endless amount of chains and he ends up chaining up Luffy, who I believe escapes from that because he gets captured by a dinosaur. By the way, there's dinosaurs inside this angler fish because I'm assuming one of the islands he ate had was a prehistoric thing. And this angler fish is living forever because he's got the, the, the pure gold within him. I don't want to dog on this movie too long. It was a good movie. I would give it a 4.5 out of 10, maybe a 5 out of 10. And when I say 5 out of 10, it's a decent movie, but it's not something I would ever go out of my way to watch again. 
I would rather just watch Film Gold on its own because it had a little bit more entertainment factor to it. Um, one Piece Heart Gold is not necessary to watch before One Piece Film Gold is what I'm saying. There are small things that connect it, but they're not that important. I mean, we find out that that uh, Nami, this isn't Nami's first interaction with Mad Treasure, which is a ridiculous name. Mad Treasure caught Nami back in the Dizay when she was hunting for treasure to pay off Arlong. And another girl who becomes important for One Piece Film Gold, but One Piece Film Gold, and she ended up betraying Nami and taking all the gold they stole from Mad Treasure and bouncing. And basically, Nami ate the shit end of the stick there. And then later they pay it off in One Piece Film Gold, which I will be discussing in my One Piece Film Gold review. Uh, eventually, Luffy runs into the little girl's father, who's also over 200 years old, which I don't think they ever explained how he lived for 200 years. That blew me away. I, I don't think they explained how he did that. My only assumption is everything within the stomach of this anglerfish, because they're so close to the main source of the uh, pure gold, they will all live forever. That's what I got from this, because the, the anglerfish stores the, the, the pure gold within its little light that's in its forehead light. And... Um, and maybe just being that close, like you don't have to literally keep it on your skin. It just has to be near you to keep you young. Because her father didn't age at all. And um, he isn't a bad guy. Turns out that he created the pure gold so that his daughter would not age. Because she has a disease that could not be cured at the time, 200 years ago. Uh, spoiler, at the end of the movie, I kind of predicted this, Chopper reveals that the disease that she has is curable now, and he eventually gives her an injection so that she can live a normal life. Which is great and all, but for some reason, Chopper happened to have the antidote on him, like in his back pocket, the minute they told them that she has this specific disease, and he explained that she that it's super easy to fix now. It just it seemed very convenient that Chopper happened to have a syringe filled with the antidote. I know I'm all over the place, but I just want to hit all these key points. Luffy eventually joins back up with Sanji and Zoro, explains that the rest of the crew has been captive. Frankie gets kind of delegated to fixing the ship because it's being eaten away by uh, stomach acid. So he, re, you know, he fortifies the ship so it can survive the stomach acid. So he kind of doesn't get to do a whole lot. Sanji and Zoro end up fighting the two henchmen, Mad Treasure's henchmen. Sanji kind of have a has a connection with the guy who has the camouflage fruit cuz he's like, "Hey, I've always dreamed of having the invisible fruit because I want to peep on girls in the bathroom. But now that you've shown me that there are other fruit, devil fruits out there that can give you the ability to be invisible, my dream is now still alive. It was kind of lame. It was just like, come on, man. Sanji, you're better than this. You're an adult now. You, you, don't, you don't need the camouflage fruit. Sanji ends up mopping the floor with this guy. No issues whatsoever. Zoro has a connection with the girl who's always drunk because he likes drinking. Um, she doesn't stand a chance. Zoro whoops her ass easy. Does not care that she's a female. And I, I appreciate that. It would have been kind of cool to see her involved in the story more. She seemed more important to Mad Treasure at first. She's an archer. So I was hoping that maybe her and Usopp would have some kind of thing. They would have to have like a like a shooting contest. Because there is a point where Usopp has to hit a target to get past a certain level uh, to get this pure gold. Which is absolutely ridiculous. They end up on the final level and they have to get through these trials. And eventually 
Usopp has to hit this target that's really hard to hit. And he does hit it in a really spectacular way, which I appreciate that they gave Usopp this moment. But it almost felt like Mad Treasure should have had the archer lady with him at the time. And like, you go and shoot this target, and then she fails, and then Usopp does it. I think that would have been a better execution of that moment if Usopp could do it, but this girl who's like a, a great archer couldn't, she really wasn't that great, honestly, by the end, since uh, Zoro basically wiped her out very quickly. Eventually, Mad Treasure does get the pure gold and uh, puts, attaches a piece of it to his chest, and I can't remember if that made him stronger or just made him feel stronger and then he and Luffy fight and at no point do you feel like Luffy's gonna lose at no point do you feel like the crew is really in danger um uh, I mean like I said this is a skippable special if you're just looking for some new one piece material to watch and having having a good time with the crew this is something you should check out if you're a hardcore one piece fan you should check this out but if you just want to watch one piece film gold and you're just like I was and you just want to to see if this is worth watching then just watch one piece film gold because you'll get the idea in one piece film gold mad treasure is not the greatest villain in one piece history i'll tell you that right now he did well for what he had going for him i think he could have done better with a better name i i i'm not i'm not sure i do believe um Lucci shows up for a hot minute just talking to another character like the CP0 guy which was cool. I was cool seeing Lucci again. But yes, One Piece Heart Gold, uh have you seen it? What'd you think of it? I personally would give it a 4.5 out of 10. Not saying it's terrible, but not saying it's worth watching more than once. Check it out. It's on the Funimation app. I watched it for free on my day off uh, on a whim because I wanted to watch One Piece Film Gold, which I did. And I will have that review up very soon. I'm Mr. Morfetto. This is more Morfanime. Please comment down below. Tell me what you thought of One Piece Heart Gold. Tell me what you thought of One Piece Film Gold. And please subscribe. It helps me out oh so much. I'll talk to you later.